participants of the QIP 2021, welcome to our virtual lab tour. In the following 10 minutes, we will be showing you an ultra cold laton laboratory. As some of you might already know, these are experiments that take place in an ultra high vacuum chamber and where using magnetic fields, uh, microwave and lasers, we are able to take uh, an atomic gas uh, initially at room temperature and bring it in few seconds to few nano Kelvin above the absolute zero. And at these temperatures, we are able to explore new exotic phases of matter, such as the Bose-Einstein condensate. But to give you a better feeling of everything that I'm explaining, let's take a look directly at the lab. Our experiment consists of two optical tables, which are inside these black cupboards that you can see. In addition, there's also a large amount of electronics around these tables. And note that while the temperatures in the lab have to be kept very constant for all our measurements to be as stable as possible, we do have the privilege of having a window in the lab. The isotope we use in our experiment is rubidium-87, which is a boson. Uh, probably the most important tool in all of our experiment are the infrared 780 nanometers lasers that are used for laser cooling in what's called a magneto-optical trap, as well as imaging and also pumping the state of our atoms. All these lasers are found in what we call the laser table. These blue boxes that you see in the center of the table are commercial laser modules, and the rest of the elements are mostly mirrors, lenses, beam splitters, and shutters. This enables us to control the intensity, the frequency, and the polarization of our lasers. Most of the time, this table is left untouched, but some parameters have to be optimized every now and then. For example, the coupling of the fibers, which brings the light from this table to the main experimental table. Some of the lasers in our lab are visible, like this red 670 nanometers laser. But most of them are actually in the infrared, which means that we rely on infrared viewers for their alignment and optimization. In addition, we also use fluorescent infrared cards. Once we have cooled down the atoms enough, we load them into an optical lattice, which are potentials made of light. These can be generated by the interference of laser beams, which creates an array of traps. By adding laser beams in one or two further dimensions, we can form the two-dimensional lattice systems we typically work with in the experiments. While the atoms are trapped in the individual lattice sites, they can hop between neighboring sites and repel each other when they sit on the same site, realizing the bose hubbard model. These lattice beams require a high amount of power, so to take a look at the experiment table, we need to wear protection goggles. Because many different laser beams are necessary to control the atoms, the majority of the experiment table is occupied by a large amount of optics. These surround the ultra-high vacuum chambers in which the atoms are contained. As they are barely visible in the setup, here are some images of the chambers themselves. The part covered in aluminium foil is the rubidium oven, the source from where we initially load our atomic gas. It is connected to the magneto-optical trap chambers, where the atoms are laser-cooled and fluoresce, as captured by the photodiode signal shown here. From there, the atoms are moved into the science chamber and into the optical lattice. While it's interesting to explore the bose hubbard model on its own, we are also often interested in just working with atomic arrays. 
We achieve this by ramping up the lattice potentials until we reach the mod insulating phase where the repulsion between the atoms becomes so large that only one atom occupies a single site. Using the internal electronic states of the atoms, this allows us to simulate spin models with hundreds to thousands of qubits. A great feature of our experiment is its capability to measure the atomic occupation on each individual lattice site. This is achieved by making the atoms fluoresce and image them through a high resolution objective. Here you can see shots of individual atoms and once they form a mod insulator they merge into this uniformly bright patch. Apart from looking at the microscope images, for normal operation of the experiment we both monitor devices live and also long term to track environmental data. For each experimental shot, we program a precisely timed sequence of hundreds of control signals. These control signals are connected to devices all over our lab, allowing us to control lasers, magnetic fields and RF signals. Another exciting tool we work with is our spatial light modulator. This device allows us to generate arbitrary patterns of light which we can send through our high resolution objective, allowing us to manipulate each atom individually and prepare a variety of atomic arrangements. And with this, we come to the end of our virtual lab tour. We hope you all enjoy it and wish you all a fruitful conference. <laughs>